Guys, welcome to this video. Welcome to this video. Today we are going to be transferring over some sad looking alocasias here. I have a fry deck, which I know isn't called a fry deck, but I'll put the species name up on screen. It starts with Nem. Um, and I have a, an alocasia stingray that I've already unpotted. So I was gonna do this off camera, but then I thought, you know what, this is sort of interesting, so maybe we could do it together. Um, so what I've done so far is put Lekka into water here to rinse it. I've got two glass vessels here, so I guess it's semi-hydro. Um, and the reason I'm transferring them over is because alocasias just hate life in my care, especially in soil. And I recently, I've been, I've been killing so many of them, guys. <laughs> So I recently potted up uh, three Samar Lancers in here. I did that tonight, actually. I should have done that on video, but I didn't. Um, so that's semi-hydro as well. And I have another story here for you with my Zebrina, which I nearly killed. But what I noticed is that it started to push out roots like crazy after putting it into semi-hydro. So it doesn't exactly look formidable <laughs> at the moment, to say the least. Um, all the leaves had just died off, so I was like, whatever. Up to you, mate. Um, and then just put it into semi-hydro here and I have it on a little heat mat down here behind me. So the plan is to do the same thing with these guys, which I don't know, this, this guy probably could have survived the stingray in soil. It probably would have been fine, but yeah, for whatever reason, I just, I don't trust myself, guys. I do not trust myself. And this, uh, again, forgotten the name, Frydeck, ha it was looking amazing when I got it. And it has sort of started drooping down. It could be just that it's winter, you know, I know that that's part of their sort of life cycle, but at the same time, I'm just worried that I'm letting the soil dry out too much, or I'm watering it too much. I guess my last little anecdote for you before we get into this, I had a um, an Imperial Black, I think it was, uh, Alocasia. So I think it was like Alocasia imperialis. Again, I'll try and remember and put the species name up on, on screen here, but it was doing immaculately. It was doing great. It was in its original soil. Um, I think I let it dry out too much. And then when I watered it, again, looked like it was fine, perked up heaps, and then suddenly sort of tipped to the side. And I was like, that's a little, a little weird, right? Why would it suddenly do that? Went over and picked it up, the roots were rotted off. All of them, completely, within a matter of two days. And I was just like, you gotta be kidding me. So, anyway, yeah, I've got a, quite a few here actually that I probably need to transfer across because I have a feeling they're just gonna die in my care. Anyway, let's just get into it. So, first things first, here's the stingray. These leaves are probably gonna go pretty soon. So what I am gonna do first and foremost is obviously remove the soil, but search for any corms that I can separate out and save, because that would be amazing. So corms are the little kind of bulbs that come off the stem, the main stem here below the soil, and then pop up and you'll get new little alocasias coming out um, beside your original one. We should find some in here, but let's see how we go. So I'm just gonna remove this soil. The roots do look pretty good, all things considered. Better than I was expecting, to be honest. Um, but yeah, and if you guys have any advice on how to keep alocasias, I have been having the hardest time with them. It seems like 50% of the ones I bring home die within a few months, maybe a month or two, and the others just do fine. So I just really don't understand how the conditions that I put them under, the soil that I put them all in, seems to be great for 50% of them, but crap for the other 50%, right? It's just the most perplexing thing to me at the moment. So that's why it's sort of driven me a little mad more recently. And I had been considering moving these guys over into um, hydro or semi-hydro just to hopefully do a little better with them. But anyway, I'll give you a look at my face whilst we're chatting, seeing as this looks like it's gonna take a little while. But the good news is the roots do look good on this guy. So this might just be part of their natural life cycle. Um, oh, you can see a corm coming out here. They're actually kind of cool. There's their pink. There's a pinkness to sort of the base of this guy. And it's interesting, these guys look like they must be closely related to Zebrinas, Alocasia Zebrinas, because they have the same kind of petiole structure. Um, 
Okay, come on. How much of this saw? So, from what I understand with changing things over to Leka, the most important thing, again, correct me if I'm wrong, but from what I understand is removing as much of the soil as possible so that you don't end up with uh, bacteria and other things in there. So that's why I'm sort of really working away at trying to, oh, we have our first corn, trying to separate out um, these roots in the soil. I'm just gonna pull this guy off. Oh, wow, okay, cool, we have a rooted corn. Um, so it was pointing down. This is the base where the root was attached to the plant and connected to this corn, but it's actually upright like that. And it's really cool that it already has roots on it, to be honest, because that's that means it should just take off. Oh, and there's another one here. Here's another one in situ, I think. It's quite big, to be honest. Let's see if you can see that. That's, ooh. Oh, okay. Yeah, another one with roots. Wow. Okay, so just gently does it. There we go. And it is important, guys, when you plant these, you have to work out which way's up and which way's down, obviously. And from what, <laughs> because they've been pointing down, the roots have grown that way, but actually that's up. So you can see, I don't know if I pull this apart here, Hopefully you can see there's a little kind of shoot coming up there in the middle. So I'll put him aside as well. And you can see this is the part where it was connected to the plant and it was facing, it was facing downwards. So you know, it just comes off freely. All right, so I'm just gonna keep shaking, trying to get rid of this, as much of this soil as possible. Whilst doing as little damage as possible to the roots though, it's usually unavoidable. All right, oh, we have another one in here that I've just found. Man, they've all rooted, that's really cool. And that same thing again, you'll see that it's attached to the plant here, the roots are coming down, but the tip that should be growing, it should, I don't know, I guess it just keeps pushing until it comes back up. Like, I'm not sure about the biology, but yeah, and they come off really easily. I'm not sure what then like forces them to come back up and then shoot out at the top, but you'll see here, the growth point is that little bit in the middle and the roots of those bits coming off the top there. So I'm not sure how you would sort of save these um, whilst facing this thing upwards. That'll be an interesting thing for us to attempt. All right, so I think, I think this is about as good as it's gonna get by hand. And then what I'm gonna do is run it under um, room temperature water, right? So lukewarm water, ideally to hopefully again, not stress the roots too much, not shock them by just running them under freezing cold water. Although, ooh, another corn. It's almost like gold mining, right? You're sort of like, ooh, what am I gonna find? Another one that's rude. Jeez, these guys are going off. A lot of the time I find them and they have no roots at all attached to them. So that's pretty cool. All right. So that's the first one the stingray, and it is called the stingray for pretty obvious reasons, I think. All right, I'll put this one aside. Clear away the soil. In fact, I should probably look through it to make sure I haven't missed anything in case some corms fell off in the action. Don't think they have. All right. And now let's do the fried egg. So again, I just... I'm just, maybe I'm being too anal and this guy would bounce back, but I just don't trust myself, to be honest, guys. So that's why I wanted to move them across into semi-hydro. So there's the root system we're working with. And it's funny, as soon as you open them up like this, you're kind of like, it's probably fine, Pete. <laughs> but, oh well, we're already doing this. All right, so same deal again, looking for corms. Oh, oh man, it's a big one just started coming off the plant. Um, yeah, look at that. It's like literally attached to the, the base of the plant, which is pretty strange. And this one too is right there. I guess we'll find out as we dig in a bit. Pun intended. <laughs> okay. So this one's a bit easier to get to because the roots have sort of gone up the sides, up and down the sides of the pot 
Whereas with the Stingray previously, it was like they'd circled all at the bottom and created a net. All right, come out. Yes, look at those nice healthy roots. I really probably could have just left this one to be honest. But we're already here, in for a penny, in for a pound. And hopefully it means I can work on my semi-hydro chops. See how good I get with semi-hydro, with which I currently have very limited experience. I wonder if this guy is even detachable. I don't think he is. Like it's so, I don't know if you can see that corn there. There's a massive one right under here. It feels like a big part of the, um, stem to be honest so i might just leave it as it is yeah they're actually a whole bunch here but they're kind of like only just emerging so look there's another one massive so i have a feeling they're probably going to just do do that pretty soon it looks like there's at least four or five of them there all right i'll do the old shake and bake oh, that's actually worked pretty well <laughs> actually lost quite a lot of the soil there guys all right, so I'm gonna take these guys over to the sink and we'll give them a rinse. Come with me. Over to the dirty sink. So forgive the mess, guys. All right. So I'm gonna heat this water up, which usually takes bloody ever. And I'm also using filtered water. Okay, so here we go with the Vibrina. Just gonna try and wash off as much of this soil as possible. So I think this one is about as good as we're gonna get it without doing too much more damage. I'm gonna just call that a win. Um, I might just rest her here, the roots in the water. And we'll go on to the non fry deck. Okay, so there we are done with that one. And it's interesting, it's almost like these corms come out of the growth, the growing eyes, the growth points here on each node. I don't know, it's pretty interesting. I'll have to learn more about the anatomy here, but there are tons popping off this thing. Okay, so I'll give this a rinse. I'll chuck these two guys on top of this. Put them somewhere else. And we'll get the vessels ready, I guess. So I have this one for the fry deck. And this one for the stingray. So I guess I've got all this lecker already cleaned, so I'm literally just gonna quietly Fill up the base. Okay, I'll take it a little bit. Make sure that the roots get down there. And in fact, I can probably can probably just take it all out. I'm just gonna do it over here, guys. So hopefully you can see if I move the tap out of the way. Again, total noob. So if you have any uh, advice, please feel free to leave it in the comments. But I have done this. I put the roots in first, just so that there are some of the roots sitting at the very bottom. I guess I'm just going to put it at about that height and just fit. So there we go, the stingray is in Lekka. The roots start about here and work their way down. And from what I understand, you need to put water nutrient solution up to about a third of the way so that there are roots above and below the water line to get oxygen and to get nutrients and uh, moisture and everything. So there's the stingray. And I guess we'll do the same thing with the fry deck here. Where you up when the blinds pull down? You love it when nobody... All right, so there you go. There's the fry deck. I don't know why I keep doing this. You guys get it. So I'm gonna make up some weak nutrient solution um, using 
the newts that I've got, chuck it in there, and I guess I'll keep you updated and let you know how it goes. I'm really hoping I haven't done a massive fuck up here, right? I'm really hoping that this helps and preserves their life into the future instead of me taking the risk with them in soil. Because although once I unpotted them here, I did see, you know, they're probably fine. My track record is not good with allocations in soil, so I kind of didn't want to take that risk anyway. Okay, so I'm just using um, Growth Technologies Foliage Focus and I am making a weak solution. So I will fill this up with two liters. There we go. And chuck in five mil per liter instead of 10. Okay, so the basic idea is to fill this up a third of the way, make sure that there are roots above and below the waterline, and I don't know how much more there is to it, guys. I still need a lot to do a lot of learning here, so again, if you have any tips or tricks, leave them in the comments, let me know. Tell me what I'm doing wrong and how I can improve. So, I'm just gonna guess about it. Maybe a little bit more. There we go. So that's the point to which I put in some nutrient solution here. Um, I guess we'll just leave it like that and see how it goes. And I think we'll do maybe slightly more for the stingray. There we go. That's probably enough. I love how I just realized that I had the tag in there the whole time. Micholitziana, I believe. Uh, Alocasia Micholitziana. Ziana, Ziana, that's the species name, anyway. Okay, so my sad looking alocasias are now in Lekka. We've got the stingray here. I'm gonna leave these leaves on for now until they really crisp up and die, just so the plant can pull as much nutrients from them as possible. And we also have the Michelitziana over here on the side. So I'm hoping this does well. The reason that I am sort of starting to want to jump on the semi-hydro bandwagon is because you can see the roots the entire time in these sorts of vessels and you can just lift them out of pots if you're doing full hydro and everything and um, obviously monitor them that way and I think they're really hard to overwater that way as well, right? You're not worrying about root rot constantly the same way that you are with soil and um, yeah, as these guys were in coloured pots, I couldn't even see what was going on with the roots. Okay, so I'll put these guys over here. <laughs> And besides that, we have these cute little satellite looking, they're almost like Sputniks, right? We have these corns. So I have four of them here from the, I'm just trying to think, the Stingray. Four of them here from the Stingray. And I'm thinking maybe I put them in a prop box sideways. I'm trying to work out what do I do with these roots? Because if I put them upright, the roots are going to be just sticking up into the air and looking really ridiculous. But if I put them sideways, perhaps at least then the shoot can come out and go up and the roots can go down. So maybe that's the idea. You guys let me know. I could probably just break all the roots off and have them facing upwards, but I feel like they've already got them. So might as well try and use them. Okay, I'm gonna go and pick a prop box and we can get started. Do you guys ever see that TV show, What's in the Box? <laughs> I remember growing up as a kid and always hearing that in the morning. What's in the box? In the box. What's in the box today? Anyway, I have um, a whole bunch of things in the box today. Um, some ratty looking philodendron giga sleeves that I'm just waiting to remove once they completely die. Some melanochrysum, these chonks, uh, Thai constellations. And I think, I think that's about it. So this was the most roomy, the roomiest one. Um, and I'm just gonna wedge these, these little sputniks in there and see how we go. So I will give you a view of what I am doing. This leaf is almost ready to go. The only reason I've left this in there is because it's just still so attached to the side of this gigas cutting or node rather. Okay, so what I'm thinking with this, right, is to kind of dig a bit of moss up and bury the roots in there and then just leave the rest of the node facing upwards. And I'm hoping that's gonna work. All right, get in there. They're just so long that it's kind of difficult to do. So, all right. 
maybe, oh look at that, I can almost <laughs> bury them all in lengthways and have it facing up sideways. That worked well. I wonder how well that's gonna work though in the long run. Okay, so one's here with all the roots going this way. Hopefully you guys can see, maybe if I bring you this way, can you see a little better? Um, all right. So, same thing again, I guess. I will try and create a little cavity and then sneak these roots in like so. So do tips first, might be useful. And then cover them back up as much as possible and have the little dude facing upwards like that. I don't know if you can see that very well. They're sort of pink here, one here, one here. This will be interesting to see if this works well, well or not. Okay, another really sort of difficult one. So I'm trying to just go with the way that the little shoot here is facing too. He's kind of curling out to the side going this way. So if I bring him up, um, I guess he'll go lengthways like that. Same thing again, okay. I might just move this leaf, dig deep down, bury them in. In you go, in you go, in you go, turn you upright. And hopefully you are good to go, mate. All right, last one. This one's almost doing the right thing. Same thing, I guess. Uh, where can I do this? Without damaging everything else that's in here. So do you down the side here. Alright, I think that's about as good as it's gonna get guys. So now I'm just gonna give it a water. I can actually feel that this is pretty dry comparatively to some of my other boxes. So I'm just going to give it a more thorough water. Especially over where the roots are. Right, that should be enough. And I'll chuck it back on the heat mat on the shelf. And yeah, I'll give you guys some updates shortly. See ya.